In this video, we discuss shocking new discoveries about early modern humans during the last full interglacial period. Approximately 120,000 years ago, a few modern humans wandered along the shore of an ancient lake in what is now Saudi Arabia's Nefud Desert. They could have paused for a drink of fresh water or to track elephants, wild horses and camels trampling the mudflats. Within hours of passing through, the footprints of humans and animals dried out and became fossilized. Now, these ancient footsteps provide rare evidence of when and where early humans lived on the Arabian Peninsula. In fact, these are the first genuine modern human footprints in Arabia. By comparing the size and shape of these tracks to those made by modern humans and Neanderthals, the researchers conclude that they were most likely made by people with longer feet, taller stature, and smaller mass, Homo sapiens, not Neanderthals, as previously reported. According to the researchers, the sediments age suggests that Homo sapiens made the tracks. The sediments above and below the footprints were dated to 121,000 and 112,000 years ago using optically stimulated luminescence, a method that measures electrons to determine when layers of sediment were last exposed to light, respectively. At that time, Neanderthals were absent from the Levant, so researchers argue that Homo sapiens was most likely responsible for the footprints. The Arabian Peninsula has long been thought to be the obvious route taken by early members of our species as they travelled out of Africa and into the Middle East and Eurasia. Stone tools indicate that ancient humans explored the Arabian Peninsula at various points in prehistory, when the climate was warmer, wetter, and the harsh deserts were transformed into green grasslands punctuated by freshwater lakes. Nevertheless, so far, researchers have only discovered a single human finger bone dating back 88,000 years to prove that modern humans, not some other hominin toolmaker, lived there. The paths taken by modern humans out of Africa have been the subject of much debate over the last two decades. Fossil and archaeological evidence, as well as craniometric studies of African and Asian populations, show that Homo sapiens existed outside of Africa 120,000 years ago. Nonetheless, this colonization has been viewed as a failed expansion because genetic analyses of living populations have consistently shown a single event followed by serial founder events. Meanwhile, several perplexing discoveries in Europe have been attributed to Neanderthals, but they exhibit behaviors that are not typically associated with Neanderthals at the time. For example, in Iberia, seashells have clearly been fashioned into necklaces. In Croatia, an eagle talons necklace has been fashioned, and in Germany, large groups of humans have been observed hunting elephants. In fact, the yield of a straight-tusked elephant bull would have been enough to meet the daily calorie needs of 2,500 Neanderthals. So far, research has generally assumed that Neanderthals congregated in groups of no more than 60 individuals. Therefore, this discovery is perplexing and begs the question as whether this elephant hunting was done by Neanderthals or by modern humans who followed their prey from the Levant into northern Europe. Hunters are known to follow their prey, and hunting is a very specialized business, so modern human elephants hunters may have invaded Neanderthal territory during this warm period around 120,000 years ago. However, the information we now have about the systematic exploitation of straight-tusked elephants suggests that humans must have gathered, at least temporarily, in very large groups or mastered techniques that allowed them to preserve and store large quantities of food, or both. Paleoloxodon antiquus roamed the landscapes of Europe and Western Asia 800,000 to 100,000 years ago. The European straight-tusked elephant was the largest land-living animal at the time, with shoulder heights of up to 4 metres and body masses of up to 13 tonnes, far outweighing today's African and Asian elephants and even the extinct woolly mammoth. But the only evidence of elephant hunting in Europe is during the warm interglacial period when humans from the tropics could have expanded to Europe and temporarily displaced and interbred with the Neanderthals. Fossil evidence from the Levant such as one individual from the Kafse cave, suggests that modern humans were already present outside of Africa at least 90,000 years ago. 
Indeed, we have known for some time that groups of early modern humans ventured outside their homeland before 80,000 years ago. Fossilized human remains discovered in Kafsi and Eskul caves date back 120,000 to 90,000 years. Skul and Kafsi hominins, also known as Kafsi school early modern humans, are fossilized hominins discovered in Skul and Kafsi caves. They are now classified as Homo sapiens, one of the earliest of their species in Eurasia. Skul cave is on the slopes of Mount Carmel, while Kafsi cave is a rock shelter near Nazareth in Lower Galilee. The remains show a combination of characteristics found in archaic and anatomically modern humans. They have been tentatively dated to be between 80,000 and 120,000 years old using electron paramagnetic resonance and thermoluminescence dating techniques. The brain structure is similar to modern humans, but they have brow ridges and a projecting facial profile like Neanderthals. They were originally thought to be a transitional species between Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans, or hybrids of the two, but they may be evidence of a larger modern human population on Eurasia. Traces of early Homo sapiens DNA were also discovered in a female Neanderthal from Siberia's Altai Mountains, providing additional evidence. The analysis suggested that modern humans and Neanderthals began mixing around 100,000 years ago, most likely in the Middle East. The Neanderthals have an extensive evolutionary history. The oldest known examples of Neanderthal-like fossils are approximately 430,000 years old. The best-known Neanderthals lived between 130,000 and 40,000 years ago, after which no physical evidence of them remains. Interestingly, Neanderthal remains from 38,000 to 100,000 years ago have the maternally inherited mitochondrial DNA of a modern human woman, rather than the ancient Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA found in earlier fossils. In that case, early Homo sapiens women interbred with Neanderthal man and their descendants carried modern mitochondrial DNA, possibly around 120,000 years ago. The modern chromosomes quickly spread through their offspring to the small populations of Neanderthals in Europe and Asia, replacing the Neanderthal chromosome. Interestingly, these modern human mates were not ancestors to today's Homo sapiens, but rather part of a population that migrated out of Africa and then became extinct or absorbed into the Neanderthal population. However, new research has discovered a genetic signature in modern-day Papuans, that suggests at least 2% of their genome came from an early and largely extinct expansion of anatomically modern humans outside of Africa. The findings, combined with evidence from the Western Asian fossil record and admixture between modern humans and Neanderthals prior to the main Eurasian expansion, add to the growing body of evidence for the presence of modern humans outside of Africa before 80,000 years ago. Indeed, some researchers theorize that archaic features in early sapiens found outside Africa were the result of interbreeding with other hominins, particularly Neanderthals. The study found indications of an early exodus of modern humans from Africa in living humans. People outside Africa are overwhelmingly descended from a group that left the continent 60,000 years ago. Now, Analysis of nearly 500 human genomes appears to have revealed a weak signal of an earlier migration in around 2% of the Papuan genome. The findings suggest that this early wave of Homo sapiens has all but vanished, so they do not significantly alter current theories about our origins. People from Papua New Guinea may bear traces of an earlier out-of-Africa migration. To reconcile this evidence with genetic data from living populations, scientists advanced the theory of a wave of pioneer modern human settlement that resulted in extinction. However, recent findings indicate that some descendants of these trailblazers survived long enough to be swept up in the later, ultimately more successful migration that led to the settlement of Eurasia. All of the other Eurasians in the study were very homogeneous in their split times from Africans. This suggests most Eurasians diverged from Africans in a single event about 75,000 years ago, while the Papua New Guinea split was more ancient, about 90,000 years ago. But two separate studies published in the academic journal Nature failed to identify the signature of this migration. 
researchers found hints of this pioneer group of modern humans in their DNA analysis of people from the nation of Papua New Guinea. Until now, genetic evidence has indicated that today's non-Africans can trace their ancestors back to this fateful dispersal. This genetic component had intermediate properties, so researchers concluded it must have originated as an independent expansion out of Africa around 120,000 years ago. Researchers believe this accounts for at least 2% of the genomes of modern Papua New Guineans. It was already known that Papua New Guineans, like other populations in Oceania and Asia, inherited a small percentage of their ancestry from Denisovans, an enigmatic sister group to Neanderthals. The researchers attempted to remove this component, but were left with a third chunk of the genome that differed from the Denisovan segment and constituted the vast majority of the main out-of-Africa migration 60,000 years ago. The paper advocates for an additional and earlier exit over 100,000 years ago, claiming that traces can still be found in Australasians. Unfortunately, the paper reports that signs of past interbreeding with a Denisovan-like archaic population found at a rate of about 4% in extant Australasians complicate interpretations, as does the possibility of further ancient interbreedings that are currently unknown. Interestingly, around 120,000 years ago in Java, a horde of ancient humans met a mysterious death. The skulls of a dozen humans were discovered, with speculation that they may have been the victims of headhunting, but whether this group is some form of late Homo erectus, southern Denisovans, or a group of early modern humans, is currently unknown. Meanwhile, perched high on a mountain in Laos is the Cave of the Monkeys. More than a kilometre above sea level, it cuts deep into the soft bedrock, with a main chamber around 200 feet inside. The cave is inland, and with just one cave mouth it gets dark inside. Yet this remote cave is the place where archaeologists, who had to haul their gear up the mountain by foot, have now found the earliest evidence modern humans to have reached the Southeast Asian mainland. Little to no anthropological research was done in Laos until recently. Debates about human colonization of East Asia have taken place for decades as researchers have attempted to understand how and when humans cross straits and seas to eventually end up in Australia. This cave is therefore a prime place to ask some of these questions about migration since mainland Southeast Asia really sits at the crossroads of Asia and Australia. The skull, they estimated, was up to 73,000 years old, and a shin bone dates back as far as 86,000 years ago. In China, researchers dated 47 human teeth discovered in a southern Chinese cave to between 80,000 and 120,000 years ago, at least 20,000 years before modern humans were thought to have lived in southern Asia. The discovery, published in the journal Nature, may force scientists to reconsider theories about how Homo sapiens spread throughout the world from Africa. This paper is a game-changer in the debate over the spread of modern humans through southern Asia. The modern human origin would remain in Africa, but attention will now shift to regions such as Arabia and India as potential stopovers on the 100,000-year-old route to southern China. Other claims for older, modern human fossils have been made in southern China, but these discoveries have remained controversial due to concerns about the accuracy of dating and whether the specimens are truly modern. However, the Deoxian teeth appear unquestionably modern in size and morphology, and uranium-thorium dating suggests they were formed at least 80,000 years ago. When dated, the stalagmite provided a minimum age of 80,000 years for the human teeth buried beneath, while an analysis of mammal fossils discovered alongside the teeth yielded an upper limit of around 120,000 years. The teeth were compared to large samples of dental fossils from early humans, including Neanderthals, and were found to closely match the features of Homo sapiens samples from the last 100,000 years. In fact, the researchers concluded that Deoxian teeth were generally smaller than other contemporary specimens from Asia and Africa, and were much more similar to later European and even modern humans. The researchers believe their discovery may break the quarantine that has limited theories about Homo sapiens in Asia to the last 40,000 to 50,000 years. If the findings are correct, 
our species may have successfully established itself in large parts of Asia 35,000 to 75,000 years before reaching Europe, according to the study. Therefore, one of two competing theories may help to explain how Homo sapiens spread from Africa to Asia earlier than previously thought. The first refers to what has long been regarded as a failed dispersal through northeast Africa and the Levant 100,000 to 120,000 years ago. Some consider fossils from the two sites found in the Kafse and Skul caves to be evidence of this earlier unsuccessful migration. Many researchers have argued that the early dispersal of modern humans from Africa into the Levant, as evidenced by fossils from Skul and Kafse around 120,000 years ago, was essentially a failed dispersal that only reached Southwest Asia. One possibility is that there was successful dispersal along the southern route, and that populations evolved quickly to the modern human stage, as evidenced by the Deoxian teeth once they arrived in Asia. The other possibility is that the Deoxian fossils represent a hitherto unsuspected early and separate dispersal of more modern-looking humans. According to this theory, some Homo sapiens populations left Africa via a different, potentially more southerly route into Asia, passing through southern Arabia and India. The authors of the study point out that fossils discovered in higher latitudes lack some of the modern human characteristics of the Deoxian teeth. This evidence may support different origins or routes of dispersal for modern humans in Eurasia, the researchers theorize, and with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you.